Breaking news. Looks like the Saints have got their guy. Finally, an OC has arised from Adam Schefter. This is breaking. This is as of 30 minutes ago. Saints are working to hire 49ers passing game specialist Clint Kubiak, son of Gary Kubiak. As their offensive coordinator per sources, Kubiak would join the Saints after he coaches his final game with the Niners in Super Bowl, whatever. No deal can be finalized until after the game. Per, ladies and gentlemen, this is a huge win. I mean, this is something get excited about to hear that we're making this kind of a hire, a young guy, an innovative guy, someone from the Shanahan tree, someone outside of the building, someone who's going to bring in new ideas, someone who is not just drenched in that horrible Saints culture that we're dealing with right now. This is the guy out of who's left that fits the template of what we wanted. We have had made video after video after video saying young, innovative, coaching tree, all of that quarterback specialist. That's what that's what Clint Kubiak is. And we'll go through Clint Kubiak's experience and where he's been, what he's done. We'll do all that in this video, just kind of a get to know. But initial reaction here, couldn't be more excited. I mean, TGIF indeed, this is fantastic news to hear on a Friday. And when the ink is dry, we can take a real deep breath because we know we have a vision. We have an offensive vision. We have an offensive identity. And we know that Clint Kubiak is going to come in with his own ideas. And we're going to start getting players to fill those ideas. That's what we want, right? So love it. Very excited. Let's go ahead and take a look. I made a little graphic for you, ladies and gentlemen. I made, I made this so we can get to know Clint Kubiak. There it is right there. All right. So who is Clint Kubiak? Okay. Current job. He's the passing game coordinator for the 49ers. He's been there for a season. Uh, his age, 36, so only a couple years older than me, very young, uh, experienced. So as you can see here, he's been all over the place. I mean, from college to multiple NFL teams, we've got quality control coach at AM, graduate assistant at AM, offensive quality control coach with the Vikings, wide receiver coach. He goes back to college with Kansas, offensive assistant with the Broncos, QB coach with the Vikings. Now, this stint right here, we're going to talk a lot about the Vikings stint. So we got a quarterback coach with the Vikings. Then he becomes their offensive coordinator for a full season uh, in 2021, passing game coordinator and quarterbacks coach with the Broncos. He eventually does call plays for the Broncos. That was the infamous Nathaniel Hackett season. Hackett uh, was, I mean, we one of the worst coaching stints we've ever seen. But Hackett relinquished play calling duties to Kubiak uh, a couple weeks into the season, and we'll look at that as well. And then his current job, passing game coordinator with the Niners under Kyle Shanahan. One thing he's done in the pros everywhere he's gone is been instrumental in working with the quarterback and instrumental in getting the most out of the quarterback. And wouldn't you know it, that's exactly what we need. It's exactly what he has to come in and do. And if you look at the quarterback that he did it with in Minnesota was Kirk Cousins. Very similar skill set to Derek Carr. You know, it's not like he went and made... Justin Fields awesome. You know, it's not like he went and made someone like that and built an offense around a running quarterback. He built an offense around a guy who we pretty much have a carbon copy of with Cousins and Carr. So let's take let, let's let me break this down a little bit. So Kubiak's one year stint as coordinator in Minnesota. The Vikings were twelfth in total offense, eleventh in passing, and fourteenth in scoring. So with Cousins, when he was with Kubiak, Cousins passed for seventy eight hundred yards and 61 touchdowns. Now this is now this right here. This is what I really like to see. When Kubiak was in Denver, all right, he takes over for Hackett, takes over play calling. Look at the difference. So when Hackett was calling plays, Denver goes from 13.8 points per game to 24.2 points a game with Kubiak. Huge difference. Huge. All right, so they and that that would have ranked them 11th in the NFL. So during Kubiak's time with Denver, he turned them around to almost a top 10 offense from, from what they were for 13.8 points per game. So uh, awful, awful. So for someone being so young, and he is young, I mean, 36. And as you can see at the bottom here, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget this, huge bonus. He's not Mike Sullivan, all right? Huge bonus. He's not Luke Getze. Huge bonus. He's not Ronald Curry. He, he's not the same retread. Huge bonus. He's not John Gruden. I know people hate to say that or hate to hear that. Oh, huge bonus again. He's not Drew Brees. After, for the last 24 hours, I've had to ask, answer questions of why we, sh why we shouldn't hire Drew Brees as, as OC. This is a guy with experience, play calling experience, 
who's coming in here and really owning this job. I mean, you, I the fact that it honestly, for the last couple of days, I thought we were going to get Luke Gitsy. I thought we were going to get Ronald Curry or Mike Sullivan, or even I was thinking maybe maybe things are so bad that Gruden maybe Gruden would be would be okay. Like I started to trick myself into thinking, yeah, let's just get John Gruden. At one point, I was thinking, you know, I wonder if Pete Carmichael would be okay with coming back. I mean, that's how dire things were whenever Luke Getzey's name was getting thrown around. Out of nowhere, nowhere, Kubiak comes in. 36, passing game, play calling experience, Kyle Shanahan. Now, you may be wondering, what's coaching tree? Coaching tree is a funny term. Coaching tree, you can have multi-trees. All right, trees can kind of interwine with each other, but I would say he is in the Shanahan tree. He coached with Kyle in San Francisco, obviously, but his dad, Gary Kubiak, coached under Mike Shanahan. All right, so he's kind of got it both ways. He's got, I'm sure, you know, he followed his dad around a little bit. I'm sure he he got a lot of Mike Shanahan's tutelage through Gary, and I'm sure he got a ton of uh, tutelage from Kyle Shanahan in San Francisco. So I love that. He, he has proven himself in every stop. You know, Minnesota, he made Cousins good. He, you know, Minnesota, I'm pretty sure in 2021, I'm, I'm pretty sure 2022 is the year they won 13 games. So 2021, I don't think they were that great. They're probably around 500. So even though that the actual, like, win-loss results weren't there, he's not the head coach, right? It, it, it is what it is. The offense was still good. And the most important thing about that stint is how good Cousins was. Because what we're worried about, in the short term, is how good can Kubiak make Carr? If Kubiak can make Carr good, and we can get all of the ROI, that's return on investment, ladies and gentlemen. If we can get all the ROI from Carr, that that alone would be a huge win to me. Because, you know, like right now, or this last season, there's been so many questions of, do we stick with Carr? Do we get rid of Carr? Do we go with Jake Hayner? Remember that time? Ladies and gentlemen, remember when we were having to make videos about why that wouldn't be a good idea? We've had to field questions about Jameis Winston and Jake Hayner and go get this person and go get that person. If Kubiak settles Carr and if Kubiak can make the current offense that we have work, that that alone would be a huge bonus to creating some kind of stability, you know, some kind of flu, some kind of fluidity with the offense, some kind of where we're, we know what we're doing, we're flowing. We're moving through the season with the same guys. There's no doubting. There's no second guessing. And then with him being 36, if that's successful, I have full confidence in him to build that same thing with new players. You know, once once Carr moves on, and even some of our current players, once the Camaras and you know guys like that kind of kind of get to the end of their career, I've got full faith in Kubiak if he's got success with them to replace them. And then, like I said, if Allen doesn't work out. Which, spoiler, he won't. If Allen won't work out, then Kubiak, let's say we do this for a couple of years, all of a sudden he's a 40-year-old head coach. That is how you build a 10, 15, 20-year period of success, like we saw with Sean Payton. You know, where you get a vision, a foundation, an identity, a scheme. It's there. You trust it. Kubiak's not going anywhere as far as like age and you know retiring and all that stuff. So... And, you know, honestly, this is also a huge win for Dennis Allen because Dennis Allen now can relinquish anything he was holding on to the offense. He can focus on defense. And we we have said in the past, now this, this didn't look the case in the middle of the season, but we said in the past that Dennis Allen can be a good DC and he shouldn't have anything to do with the offense. The problem with the last couple of seasons was Pete Carmichael could not do that. Pete Carmichael could not take ownership of, could not take ownership of the offense. Didn't happen, right? Couldn't do it, never could do it. Not sure why he had the job. He didn't want the job. So that there was still a void there. Kubiak, whether it works or not, Kubiak will take ownership of the offense. Kubiak will instill his scheme, his strategy, his vision. And the most important part of that is Dennis Allen won't be. Dennis Allen can go back to the defense. So in a weird way, this should also be a huge lift for our defense to now get Allen's full focus back. I love this. I'm very happy as a Saints fan. I mean, this couldn't couldn't be better news. Kubiak, to me, 
slam dunk hire. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, if you look at who we possibly could have had, I'm putting Kubiak right there, right there with like Zach Robinson and Gerard Johnson. If you told me you can either have Gerard Johnson or Clint Kubiak, you can either have Zach Robinson or Clint Kubiak, Dan Pitcher or Clint Kubiak, to me, they're the same. I, I, Kubiak's right there. I mean, he's right there with those guys. You know, 50-50 coin toss. And this late into the game, to come out with somebody who would be at the top of my list, would be at the highest ver- highest place, that's a huge win. I mean, this this once this becomes official, I think I think I might send like a fruit basket or something to Mickey Loomis. I, th- I think I might send him you know, a gift card to Applebee's or something because he looked like he was he was ready to let us down and hit a home run. So hopefully this all works out. We've got a week or so for to for this to still be a rumor until the, the contract, you know, after the Super Bowl. So we'll see if there's any rumblings after that. But very, very happy. A huge day, huge win. Go celebrate. Pop some champagne. Do what you gotta do. Go down in the comments below. I want to hear from you what you think about this. Are you getting a replica offensive coordinator shirt and replica uh, offensive coordinator headset? Or are you getting that to, to you know, be there in solidarity with Clint Kubiak? I think I might. I think I might get me a, a coaching headset and just wear to the games to be there with my guy Clint. So fantastic stuff. If he needs a ride from the airport, let me know, Clint. I will happily, happily pick you up bring you downtown, show you the ropes. It's all good. Dome dog on me. But go down in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.